Many dances are stylized forms of courtship. Scorpions dance for the same seductive reason. But a Spanish scorpion must court with care. As he takes her by the claws, he fends off her sting with his tail. Rejection now would be fatal. He keeps up her interest by sweeping her off her feet. The dance may last for hours as he tries to put her into a receptive mood. He seals his proposal with a kiss. It stops him becoming a meal. Next, he offers a present. He leaves a package to fertilize her eggs on the tip of a stalk. He guides her to pick up the gift, leaving just the stalk behind. This weird journey explores many other strange aspects of nature's ways of breeding. In courtship, gifts are always appreciated. The satin bower bird of Australia has an eye for the presents his partner adores. Her favorite color is blue. This is not his nest, but a bawa, a place of seduction. He must keep up its maintenance to impress any females that call. She visits all the bowers in her neighborhood to judge each male on his home decorating skills. She's hard to impress. An experienced male won't accept rejection lightly. He just works harder at winning her over. The more blue trinkets he accumulates, the more he turns her eye. His interest in home decoration is purely biological. The harder he works, the more he proves his fitness. He has amassed the bowerbird's equivalent of wealth, a proof of his genetic worth. And this bird has a lot on show. On this occasion a ring seems appropriate, and it seems to be doing the trick. We may see human parallels in the bowerbird's courtship, but biologically, our behavior is stranger. We are one of the most sexually active of all mammals, but we're also one of the least fertile, and few animals have such a long courtship or mate throughout the year. But by any measure, this marsupial mouse is weird. Antichinus squeezes its bouts of passion into a few energetic days. In early spring, the male's only goal is to mate with as many partners as possible. Each session lasts several hours and as soon as it ends he looks for a new partner. He aims to track down every female in the neighborhood. 
Subtlety is not his forte. All this activity leaves him little time to eat, drink or sleep and in time the stress starts to wear him down. Although exhausted, rampant hormones urge him on to yet another encounter. But he's feeling the strain. Over the two week breeding season, he ages a lifetime. Run down and tired, he is literally on his last legs. All the males are soon gone, leaving the females to bring up the babies. His sacrifice makes genetic sense. More offspring will survive if he isn't there to compete for food. Male mice may cause their own demise, but in the meadows of southern France, it's the female that's the deadlier of the species. The femme fatale in question is the European praying mantis. The smaller male courts his partner carefully. She can literally make a meal of any male. But he has to mate to pass on his genes. In this gruesome embrace, her love bite is the last thing he knows. But even this trauma doesn't seem to unnerve him. He continues to mate as though nothing has happened. Losing his head over a female helps nourish his future offspring. Astonishingly, decapitation even improves his performance. A tiny brain in his rear keeps him active. This macabre coupling can last a day. Even then, the discarded carcass doesn't give up readily. In the oceans, courtship is even more complicated. It is a world of sexual confusion and gender bending. One of the commonest reef fish are Anthias. They gather in shoals many hundreds strong. Oddly, most of them are female. They can be identified by their violet eyebrow line and orange color. The few males are purple with a plume-like fin on their back. Should the male be removed, something strange happens. The leading lady takes over his role, literally. Her sexuality is flexible. She can perform a quick sex change to take his place. Not only does her color and appearance change, she becomes he by developing male sex organs as well. It takes less than a week for this lady to become a fully functioning gent. Gender bending is also a speciality of sea hares. Like other sea slugs, sea hares are bisexual. Their hindquarters are female 
and their head ends are male. Their sexual orientation depends on which ends meet first. When several sea hares get together, they often form a mating chain. The front slug has to be female, but those in the middle mate both ways, and the last sea slug is always male. If the leader turns and joins the end of the chain, a bisexual wheel forms. Birth inevitably follows mating. <laughs>